on today's Question of Faith. Are there support groups for lay people? Hey everybody, this is Question of Faith. I am Mike Hayes. I am the Young Adult Ministry Director here in the Diocese of Cleveland. And I'm Father Damian Ferentz, the Vicar for Evangelization. And I'm Lisa Leander Reedus, and I'm the assistant to the bishop. Ooh. Welcome, Lisa. It's good to have you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Anytime you have an appointment with the bishop, Lisa's usually the first person who meets you. And then <laughs> the front lines. <laughs> exactly. The front lines. I love well, it. it's interesting because, Mike, you said that a question came in about people wondering, are there... What, what was the question? Support, yeah, not support groups or? Yeah, what, pe- what people had asked, what someone asked was that they heard our podcast when you mentioned that you have a support group for, for priests. priests. Yes, yes, yes. And then they, they were like, hey, that sounds pretty good. Or, or, do we have those things for light people? <laughs> That's right. Okay, so I just met with my priest support group this past Sunday. We meet right. once a month. We get together. We pray the breviary. We, um, then we stop after the reading. We share our faith a little bit, and then we have a dinner and conversation. And it's accountability. It's friendship. It's fraternity. And Mike asked me this question, and I said, Lisa, Bishop's secretary, I know is part of a, a group where she gets together regularly and prays and studies. And I thought, we should ask her. And so you did, and yeah. here and you here are. So is. tell yeah, us a little bit about our what little, you're involved group. in. Yeah. So we have a small group that I just have at my house once a week, and it usually happens around Lent. So years ago, I was involved in small groups when my kids were young, and we were kind of looking for a way to find a way to, I guess, to socialize and grow in our faith. Mm. And so we thought, let's just get a book and try this. And the kids would be running around and things. But we found a way and found a way to, you know, have confidential friendships, and they kind of grew over time. And then there was a time that it kind of lapsed, and I remember feeling just like I was missing something. I thought, I'm missing something, but I realized it's the small group friendships with women, um, although it can be both men and women together. Um, but your group is particularly is women? women or just specific? um, specifically women. And I said, let's start this during Lent again. So for the last couple of years, we've been doing this, and it's been just fantastic. And so this year, we're actually um, doing the USCCB's Eucharistic Revival Small Group Series. Oh, nice. It's fantastic. Those are videos. Those are videos. There are seven videos with so seven weeks, and they're very organized, very up-to-date. So it's not like you're going to watch something that is like you're thinking, oh, this is so boring and it's so old. These are really well-made. And so I got the ladies together, and we've been doing this. They're very structured. They last maybe two hours, but in, including that share time is included in the two hours. Mm. So they kind of time it even so that it doesn't kind of go off track. The Although video times do. it? So the they, video times they it. They give you a presentation and they say pause and yes. discuss? and then okay. they'll say there's two minutes left. Please wrap up your discussion. And then so there's two yeah. times during this video that you share for it's about an hour. So it's been just fantastic, um, like reconnecting with uh, my friends, kind of looking at our faith, growing, sharing. Everything comes out, you know, what's going on in your life or how does this affect your family or what type of, you know, what, how has the Eucharist affected my life, and and what kind of experiences have you had? So it's been it's been great. Yeah. And do do you always use some kind of material, or do you just yes. come in and talk about your we life? We do usually. We do. I mean, and then sometimes we'll plan something like a night where we're just going to talk about our lives, and mm-hmm. just everybody brings food, and we just kind of hang out. Cool. Mm-hmm. But usually it revolves around some sort of material. Yes. Yeah. And how did all this start? Like. Well, like I said, years ago I was involved in something like that, and then I went to um, go to Mass with my son, who goes to a different parish. Um, and I was just looking through at the bulletin at that parish, and I saw that they had um, all kinds of small groups for all times of the day, for people that yeah. work, for people that are at home, for all these things. And it was all like a survey genius, sign up whether you know the people or not. And I thought to myself, okay, well, I don't know any of these people, but who cares, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I'm a Catholic. Um, in the diocese, and I thought, I'm just going to sign up for one of these small groups, even though it's not my parish. So I signed up, and I ended up going into these people's home and meeting some new Catholic friends, and it ended up being really fantastic. So I thought, well, I should do something like this at my parish, or just something like this for my group. And so that's mm-hmm. kind of how it started up again. Nice. That's yeah, great. It's been yeah. great. It's, it's one thing to go to Mass on Sundays, and we certainly mm-hmm. should, and celebrate the Eucharist. Um, but it's another thing to to be because that's m- most of our parishes. That's a 
that's big. And you're with a lot of people and you don't get to know everybody. So it's really important outside of our Sunday participation in the liturgy at Mass, Eucharist, to be able to share one's faith and, and then even unpack. Because at, at Mass, it's the priest who's preaching. But it's important that we preach to each other, too, and listen to each other and hear where the Holy Spirit is moving in my life and where the Holy Spirit's moving in your life. And, and that community, that small group, is so essential to yeah. the life of faith. Yeah, and what kind of struggles we have with these things, you know, and then, then those struggles can be shared, you know, and someone might have an idea for you or someone might... Mm-hmm share in the struggle and say, yeah, I'm trying to make it through too. Let's, let's do this together. You know, that's, mm-hmm. that was really important to me. I was part of a small group in college. After a retreat that we had together, we decided we're, we're going to keep the small group going. Yeah. And we kind of yeah. stayed together after that for, for the rest of the school year. And then uh, since then, I've, I've always kind of tried to do it. Um, now with the uh, addition of Zoom, some of, my, some of my colleagues in ministry who were all over the country we do this like on a quarterly basis mm. uh, where we, we all kind of get together and just say, okay, what's, what's going on? You know, wh- how are you praying? Right. And there's a lot of wisdom, I think, when you listen to other people because they share their own experiences. And, and you know, even if you're an extrovert or introvert, what's great about the small groups is everybody comes from a different place. Yeah. And, you know, some of us are talkers, some of us are quiet. But even when you're quiet, some t- there will be like one statement that will come out that's very profound. And you think, wow, this is fantastic. And, and I think confidence, like being in a group of people that you know you can trust. Because obviously, you know, you want to be able to trust if you're sh- struggling with something. You want to know that that's going to stay in that group. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah. that's really important. The confidence is important. Also, I think it's important to have someone in the group to make sure you stay on track right. and don't kind of go down some rabbit hole that that keeps you unfocused, but stay focused. And some people in groups have a tendency to talk a lot and some a little bit. So it's also important to make sure that everybody's able to share and everybody's able to listen. And it's not like you're severe or like draconian in your implementation of the house rules, but that you have somebody keeping keeping tabs on things. Mm We used to say everybody has an equal chance to participate, and so the facilitator's role right. is to make sure everybody has an equal chance. Um, it's always honorable to pass, and um, and there's no, we used to say there's the no jab rule. There's no judging, advising, or blaming. Mm. Right. So you, mm-hmm. you know, good. people are judging, you're going to share from their own experience. You don't judge them for their experience. You, you try not to give them advice either. This isn't an advice group all the time, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we, we want to hear from other people's experience. Then share from your own experience. Don't tell people what to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And then right. don't blame people for their, mm-hmm. their situations. Right, you know? for sure. And sometimes, like with my support group, we've got guys in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Yeah. It's an intergenerational priest group. So there are times when the younger guys are like, what do I do here? And then the older guys are giving yes. counsel and advice. And sometimes with um, the older guys, like, why are young people thinking this way? And then we're, we're able to share, but not in a way that's, you know, wagging a finger, but a, right. a healthy intergenerational group. Is your group intergenerational? Is about the same? We're, s- we're similar in ages, but we do have, like, some of the, uh, like, one of the uh, ladies is uh, still raising children. Okay. Um, some are taking care of parents. Nice. Um, so there is there is a little bit of difference there, but it has been great just to, and like you said, I mean, wisdom, listening to other people's experiences, maybe I should try that. Also, we've been really good about following up with each other, too. So throughout the week, you know, I've noticed, you know, hey, how's that situation going? I want to let you know I'm praying for you today. Mm-hmm. So it just makes you feel good that someone's there really listening and following up with prayer. And I'm reaching out, hey, if you want to talk, or we can discuss this next time after the video ends. Let's talk about this mm-hmm. again. Now, does your group you you mentioned something about food so uh-huh. is food part of your gathering not, sometimes or well actually <laughs> that's a great question not a lot we have i we have like a one little thing it's just like a a quick bread that we put out and we put out water everybody seems to bring their own things so okay i usually would take like hey anybody want some wine anybody want some coffee and everybody usually comes in with their you know water bottle or okay. something but i think after the video ends, after the session ends, after the seven sessions, we're going to have a night oh, of good. everybody's bringing a dish, and then we're just going to hang out. Potluck, yeah. Right. That's nice. cool. Because yeah. it is very Catholic to yes. have food be part of our events. Yeah. And like you say, maybe it's not 
every time, but then yeah. to to culminate the experience and then figure out, okay, what are we going to do next? Do you know what you're doing next after the video series is know, done? No, but I know okay. that I always feel like I'm missing something when it's when it's over. Right. So we haven't decided how we're going to follow up yet. Huh. See, this is interesting because I think, Mike, you've worked with RCIA as well. And RCIA becomes a small group within the parish. And one of the most important things to do after someone becomes Catholic and enters mm -hmm. into the church to find a group that they can be part of because all too often it shouldn't happen, but man, I really love this RCA group and now I've become Catholic, but where do I go? So everybody should have some small group to be part of to keep your, to keep your faith alive and, and on fire and to be able to share your faith and hear other people's witnesses. Yeah. And keep asking questions, especially RCIA, right? Yeah, you know, learning. I, so I've, much I've to got learn. 30 other questions after I've, I've been confirmed now or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. and, now I, and now I don't know where to, to go with those things. Mm -hmm. So small groups sure. are really, really helpful for that. So, Lisa, you said that you saw something in a bulletin that kind of spurred things on. Um, how how do you how would you suggest to our listeners if they're not part of something like this where would they look? I think that you should obviously look at your own parish, but if not just your parish, look around at the parishes nearby. Because mm -hmm. my guess is that there is something going on, mm -hmm. and to realize that you know that we're just we're one you know we're Catholic one whole church, and we don't only have to be at our parish. Um, that we can go to another parish. So look around your area. That's what happened to come across the way I came across my experience. And then maybe take it back to your parish because maybe that's something they need. And mm -hmm. I've been thinking about that also. Like, wow, I saw this at uh, my son's parish, and I thought, this is a fantastic idea. Why don't we do something like this at our parish? So it's something to consider. But um, that's my suggestion. That's good. Yeah. And not to be afraid to be a pioneer. Right. And this is very important in 2024. People are like, we should have something. Well, what would you well, like to well, have? Do would it. you be willing yeah. to start this? <laughs> I've never thought of that. Can I? Yeah, try it and, and see where it goes. That may be the Holy Spirit's prompting. You know, you're reading that bulletin all these times. I want to be there. Then I could take this to my parish. And what a blessing it is then to take that fire and spread it elsewhere. Two of our young adults in the diocese, Joe Vicario and Jimmy Ludwig, just they did exactly that. They said, you know, we'd like to have a small group for young adults. We'll we'll start it. We'll we'll you know we'll take this on and we'll start advertising. And so they call it the Catching Fire. It's the biggest young adult group in the diocese. Mm -hmm. Wow! I mean, and that's all they do is they meet every Sunday and yeah. they meet in states. And now they have several yeah. small groups that meet together, but they split up into five or six groups of ten mm -hmm. or so. And we um, grapevines the same thing in, on the west side. Yeah. Yeah, I think ten is is a nice number. I think sometimes if you get into too big of a group, yeah. people then feel nervous, like, if I talk at the same time as this person or whatever. So 10 or smaller is, is a nice number. I small think. groups are small. Yes. Right. And yeah. even if your group, like Catching Fire, there's 60 that gather in the evenings, but then they break off into five different right. groups to have yeah. smaller group yeah, discussions okay. because you need a smaller group to be heard and to hear other people. It's kind of like they would say... Monsignor Manners would say a good dinner party is between six and nine. Mm -hmm. It's like the per because you can carry one conversation with that amount of people. Once you get 12, 15, yeah. 20, you break off into little groups. So yeah. to have a smaller group where you can share and everybody can listen and participate, that's very important. Mm -hmm. And it's not so small where the, the introverts uh, don't have enough time to kind of clear out the cobwebs and think about what they want to say. You right. know, if, right. if, if, if it's a group of four, well, three people said so. Now, I'm right. like, now I've got to come up with mm -hmm. something as an introvert, right? You know? yeah. So you have to give introverts enough time to kind of think about what they want to say and respond. Mm -hmm. And the extroverts can't wait to talk, so <laughs> right. they can't make them wait too long <laughs> either. Has your, has your group read books? Have you done any yeah. books? Book study or this, mostly did, video? We did do, I think, what was, I think last year we did um, – St. John Paul's Letter to Women. Oh, nice. And it's, we did go through, like, there was, like, a book that we did there. And then we kind of felt like we were time to move on to something different. Nice. And so we've done that. I, There was one also at my parish that was a small group they did on joy. Nice. Which was really good. And so that was a, someone that's on staff at the parish did. And there was maybe, like, eight of us. And that was a fantastic one also. Mm -hmm. um, so we're kind of looking for something new. Um, what, you know, maybe something, I don't know different than what we've done before. Mm. But I can tell you, this has been fantastic. This Eucharistic Revival one has been great. That that video series has come up 
frequently in conversations over the last week that if you have not looked at this, we'll put it in the show notes. It's excellent resource. I know Bishop Woost is bragging about it. And we have sent it out as the Eucharistic Revival team to pastors, to parish catechetical leaders. Sometimes, you know, you get an email from the diocese, like downtown, you delete it or something. But sometimes we're sending you good stuff. So <laughs> yeah. check it out. And it's free. That's it's the other free. thing. It's, it's a so free resource. You so if you're sitting here saying, I want to be part of a small group, what would I, I don't know where to start. Well, these videos are free. Call your friends over, watch them, reflect, and see where it goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's 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 so funny that you know people are I don't know where to start but there are all these free resources that are oh, out there more yeah. resources than we've ever had yeah. available online so we're the highest educated lady in the country and people are developing resources all the time you know our job sometimes you know when you get an email from downtown we've curated some of these resources for you you know we said no no these are good ones yeah, yeah these are the ones out. to try you know and if you don't like them write me a 500 word essay why you don't like them and then I'll, <laughs> I'll respond to you will you grade them and send them back yeah <laughs> <I will. laughs> your, your argument here was fallacious you know <laughs> <laughs> Said the you violated the principle of non-contradiction. Okay. <laughs> Lisa, we've been talking about your parish. We're going to do all this small group work. What, what parish do you belong to? I belong to Saints Cosmos and Damien in Twinsburg. It's a beautiful named parish. It is. It is. It, oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Father. <laughs> Yeah. So Father parish. Matt Kortnick is your pastor. He's our administrator. Oh, administrator. That's yes. correct, because he's young, and it's his first That's right. time in there. Yes. So here's something, if you didn't know, with mostly the guys under 40, the younger priests, the bishop does not make them pastors immediately. He makes them administrators first, and then often the administrator becomes the pastor. Uh-huh. But it's a way to have a progressive experience of leading a community. Yeah. Father Kortnick was... Um, one of my first students when I came back from Seaway and started teaching at the seminary. Okay, yeah. So I taught him uh, ancient Greek philosophy back in the day. We used to play guitar together. He is one of the funniest um, men, and it took until Absolutely. his junior year till he hosted the senior roast for us to figure this out. But he is super dry sense of humor, mm-hmm. but really great man. And he's a twin, oh, which is know. interesting okay. because he's at Cosmos and Damien, a parish where there were twins. And Father Singler used to be pastor there, and he's a twin. And it's in Twinsburg, which is where twins are. So what, what, what do you love about your parish? Well, in a very practical, in a very practical sense, I would say um, being a practical person, that's how I approach my faith. There's not a lot of drama or ego in our parish. Mm. It's very – people, I think, are very welcoming. I feel and I truly believe that people care about each other's souls at our parish. There's not a lot of gossip. Um, it doesn't seem like, you know, it seems like it's just a lot of cohesiveness in our parish. Um, one of the most important things of our parish, though, is that we have perpetual Eucharistic adoration. I knew you were going to say it. Which I always have to say because we've had it for over 20 years, and I keep thinking about how blessed we are to have this. I mean, all the relationships that have started, even just from the people that have come after you or before you, you get to know the people, you know, they're like part of your family. All the prayers, the answer, the healing, the... The, it's just been fantastic. So I think that's my favorite thing about our parish. And even if you don't go to my parish, like some people have left the parish for other reasons, they've moved or whatever, they still come back for their hour. Hmm. It's that important. That's cool. So I would say that, um, you know, we have a lot of young families, a lot of middle age, a lot of older people. So it's very, same thing, multi-generational. Um, you see the same faces every week. I, I just, it's a fantastic parish. When my classmate, Father Mike Stalo, was pastor, he's now at the seminary, I remember him telling me that even in terms of ethnicity, mm-hmm. there are many cultures represented there. And during his time, I think he put the national flags, the country's mm-hmm. flags, somewhere in the church. And there are probably over 20, 20 flags of countries represented um, in the parish. That was very impressive to me. So it's out on Ravenna Road in Twinsburg, in Twinsburg if you've yes. never been there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, stop by and... Come to Mass sometime. I think you'll really in, enjoy it. So so maybe Saint, they'll see you there, too. Maybe. Yeah. So it's Saints Cosmos and Damien in Twinsburg, Ohio. Mm-hmm. And then our readings for the third Sunday of Lent, Jesus drives out the money changers in the gospel this week. I love the part at the end here where it said, uh, and he did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. Mm. <laughs> Jesus understands our human nature, the good and the bad, right? Mm-hmm. You know, he understands our human nature well. 
What, any reflections on this weekend's readings? Well, I actually pulled up the Ten Commandments. Oh, so okay. I don't know if I... But um, reflections, I think, for me personally, I would say, to always, like, check myself as far as pride, um, because it always is an issue when we struggle with anything. It usually comes from our pride. Um, and that, uh, like, Jesus gave us the commandments, is what I have here, um, basically, so that he can he give us those so we could find joy. Mm-hmm. And so if we, when we don't follow the commandments, we usually find ourselves in a bad place. But I really believe um, that we just have to keep trying. I know myself, the things I struggle oh, yeah. with, you know, um, that someone gave me the mess, someone gave me a piece of advice a long time ago, which I think about a lot. And that's, um, you do it by the renewing of your mind. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes, so sometimes, you know, like if I've struggled with something, I tell myself I have to concentrate on things more holy, you know, even if it's just for a time, take out the other stuff. And usually at first it seems really hard, but then it gets easier. And so that's my personal feeling about that, um, if that makes sense. That makes sense, Mm -hmm. perfect sense. You know, everything that Jesus did was loving. So even overturning these tables of the money changers in the temple area was a loving act because he's putting things in their proper place. And Sometimes that's how he works in my life. You know, I'm a big fan of Flannery O'Connor that it, the, it's sometimes our heads are so hard that the Lord has to hit them, you know, and knock, be like, hey. Um, and so sometimes um, these kind of actions can get our attention and then we can, we can move. But it's never God. It's not out of an irrational anger. It's actually out of a deep, deep love. So those are the readings for the third Sunday of Lent. Lisa, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's really been fun. Take care of that bishop for us. I will do my best. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, rate and review our podcast. If you have a question of faith, you can send that to me, mhays at dioceseofcleveland.org. Thanks to you who have been sending questions, and we've gotten several in the last week, so we'll, we'll get to those as we get to those. We do one each week here, each and every time, on Question of Faith.